Joker, no, no. It's King Brew Pan. Alright guys, so just like I promised in my last introduction video, we are now going to be going over Necroz format. This format was one of my favorite formats to play in despite the Jin Lock causing the legendarily horrible Necroz mirror match. Necroz format was really just an extension of what is known as Duelist Alliance format, which lasted forever. But that being the case, there were several decks played that are modern classics and one that could be a modern annoyance. So in this video, we're going to be discussing relevant decks, strategies, and core choices to get you guys on your way to mastering another format. Real quick though, before we get started, if you want more videos like this one, then please support the channel on Patreon. The link is down in the description. Unlike other formats I've gone over, this format is far more modern and I don't have to explain ancient rules in the game like priority. I don't even have to explain the field spell rule because that came into effect in the TCG on July 10th of 2014 and Duelist Alliance didn't come out in the TCG until August of that same year. Now, the ban list is a lot closer to our modern ban list and it would take me forever to rattle the whole thing off so I'm not going to. Just know that we are going to be mainly focused focused on the January 2015 list. Also, there are two ban lists that you could follow. The first, of course, is the January 2015 list. Necroz were at full power with Lavaval Chain and everything following the release of Secret Forces, which was under this list. Necroz and Klee started to get hits on the ban list beginning with the April 2015 list, so you could play a more tamed Necroz format if you chose to. Just know that Necroz slash Duelist Alliance format didn't truly end until the November 2015 list. This is the ban list that every Duelist Alliance era deck got to torn apart from. Still terribly sad to think about, actually. However, in this video, we are going to focus on the January 2015 format and not go into later Necroz format after Clash of Rebellions especially. Things get really messy because of the clowns that came out in that set and every deck splashed in the Perform Age engine, so I'm not going to include them in on the discussion. Now let's talk about where the format began. Though cards from previous sets were played like Exiton Knight and Lavalval Chain, Duelist Alliance format obviously began with the release of Duelist Alliance. This introduced us to Shadal, Burning of Abyss and Teller Knights, which were all the main influential decks in Yu-Gi-Oh for over a year after their initial release. Yang Zing also was released in Duelist Alliance, but was not considered as powerful as the other three main decks, especially as time went on. These decks battled it all out, with each deck being considered the best at one point in time or another. We also had the release of Klee 4 in the New Challengers, which immediately became a main contender. We got other great support in the New Challengers as well, but we are going to focus on Klee 4 when it comes to the New Challengers. This is because Klee 4 became one of the most broken decks of all time immediately upon release. This is not only because of Skill Drain being at 3, but because of Vanity's Emptiness being at 3. Vanity's Emptiness was very format defining, but we will get more into that later. There were other sets released before it was all said and done, but let's just skip to the Secret Forces. This introduced us to Necroz, which is still considered to be one of the most powerful decks of all time. But we also got two other decks from the Secret Forces, those being Ritual Beasts and Yosinju. I'm not really going to talk about them though until I get to the deck profiles. Okay, so now that I have explained all of that, let's move on to why Necroz, Klee, and Burning Abyss were initially the best decks at the beginning of Necroz format, and why Burning Abyss was the best deck later on and even went on to win nationals. So starting with Necroz, Necroz were the most consistent deck by far and were able to always open up with great moves going first or second. Going first, you would ideally perform the Jin Lock combo off of Lavaval Chain, and going second against Shadals, for example, you had Necroz of Unicorn that turned off the effects of opponents' extra deck monsters. Necroz also had their own Trishula, which was a devastating play. But then we have Klee, which main deck some of the most powerful trap cards of all time, mainly Skill Drain and Vanities. And Klee Fort was able to take advantage of Skill Drain because Skill Drain would turn off their monster effects, giving them their original attacks. Now, Burning Abyss was also a main contender because of all of its monsters being able to float, allowing you not to easily lose advantage. The deck had access to all of the best ranked threes in the game, giving it plenty of versatility, but also the deck could main broken traps like Karma Cut. And they even had their own board wipe in the form of Fire Lake. Other competitive decks were Dinko Dolls, Teller Knights, Heroes, Ritual Beasts, and more that I'll be showing in the deck profile section of the video. Before we get to the deck profiles and all of that, I want to put major emphasis on one thing in this format. The Jin Lock. The Jin Lock is made with Jin, Releaser of Rituals, and keeps your opponent from special summoning monsters. The Jin Lock was format defining because Necroz could make the lock with ease and also maintain it using their ritual monsters for protection. This made outing the lock difficult at times, 
but it was crucial to main deck outs to it. Popular card choices to out the Jinlock were Exiled Force, Book of Moon, Book of Eclipse, Raigeki, and Darkhold. But as the format went on, players got more and more creative with their Jin outs, playing cards like Bull Blader and even Shock Troops of the Ice Barrier. The Jinlock not only impacted the format by stopping special summons, but by forcing the Necroz Mirror Match. I briefly brought this up earlier, and I also made fun of it in my Bad Mirror Matches in Yu-Gi-Oh! video, but even though the Necroz Mirror was very, very painful to play, some will argue that it's one of the most skillful Mirror Matches ever. Very similar to how players will argue that the Goat Control Mirror Match is very skillful as well. So like I said a minute ago, it was very important to main deck your outs to the Jin Lock, as Necroz was the most popular deck at the time. This was extra important in the Necroz Mirror Match. You had to be able to out the Jin Lock in order to really play Yu-Gi-Oh! But between Gungnir's effect, Colossalus' effect, and Trishula's effect, that's not an easy task. Even main decking your outs doesn't ensure you that you're going to out the lock. For example, if you activate Raigeki, your opponent can just discard Gungnir. Or if you target Colossalus, for example, with Book of Moon, your opponent can just discard Trishula, blocking your Book of Moon and keeping the Jin Lock on board. So simply put, you guys, the Necroz Mirror Match was very tedious and very painful to play. Another format defining card was Vanity's Emptiness for the same reason as the Jin Lock. Vanity's, however, was a card that any deck could play, allowing monsters to set up their boards and lock their opponent out of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! This made Mystical Space Typhoon, for example, a very important card. But in Necroz, it was very popular for that deck to side three twisters, also for Vanity's Emptiness to get it off the board, otherwise you can't play Yu-Gi-Oh! Now, let's go ahead and move on to the deck profiles, starting with Necroz. Necroz were such a powerful deck, not only because of the Jin Lock and power plays, but because of their insane consistency. The deck's search cards are Manju, Sinju, Bryanac, Colossalus, and even Reinforcement of the Army. Not to mention, the ritual spells can trigger in the grave and get searches for other ritual spells. Necroz of Unicorn turns off all extra deck monsters, and if you summon Bryanac, he can bounce extra deck monsters. And of course, Trishula banishes a card from hand, field, and graveyard, resulting in total devastation for your opponent. Next up, we have Pay 800 Dot Deck, Klee Fort. Klee was also pretty consistent with Scout, Summoner's Art, Sacrifice, and Monolith. But what really made the deck was the sheer amount of broken traps that it could main. Vanity's Emptiness is broken, as I explained earlier, but Skill Drain has perfect synergy with the Klee Fort monster lineup. With Skill Drain, you not only floodgate your opponent, but beef up your monsters in the process. And then we have Dante's Infer- I mean, Burning Abyss. This deck is extremely powerful for one of the same reasons that Klee Fort is, the trap lineup. Being able to play broken traps that require a discard cost and not technically having to pay that cost is very strong. Also, the entire deck floats, even Dante, which makes the deck super hard to kill. The deck also had easy access to the best rank threes in the game, as explained earlier, because every Burning Abyss monster can special summon itself from hand. Then we have Shadals. Shadals were without a doubt the most powerful deck at the very beginning of Duelist Alliance format, but later it really became everyone's favorite underdog deck. Just like Burning Abyss, the deck is really hard to kill, but with Shadals, it's because of the flip effects that all of their main deck monsters possess. This deck also has very, very powerful fusions. The best being El Shadal Construct, which can auto kill anything, but El Shadal Winda is also a great floodgate card, limiting you and your opponent to just one special summon. Then we have Teller Knights. Teller Knights were the rank four deck of the format, playing cards like Call of the Haunted to accentuate that aspect. The deck also had very powerful Xyz monsters at its disposal, like Triver and Diamond. This deck also played its own very powerful counter trap, which was really good against everything. So those are the main five decks of the format, but I want to bring up a couple of more, starting with Heroes. Heroes are powerful in this format because of one card, Dark Law. Dark Law is a one-sided macrocosmos that the deck makes with ease off of Shadow Mist. And Dark Law also banishes cards from your opponent's hand, which was really good against Necroz when they would search. Then there's Evil Swarms. This deck made its reappearance in Duelist Alliance and Necroz formats simply because of Evil Swarm Ophion being able to keep Necroz and Shadals at bay, but also by playing a brutal trap lineup. This deck just seems to be an eternal anti-meta option simply because of Ophion. Then we have the two other decks that came out in the same set as Necroz, Ritual Beasts, and Yosinju. Ritual Beasts are a contact fusion deck, able to search into their Steeds, Trap Card, and also are able to deal a lot of damage, but the deck has always lacked consistency. Then we have Yosinju, which could play Tinky for consistency, but was mainly used as an anti-meta option similar to Evil Swarms. Whew, that was a lot to go over, you guys, and I wasn't able to cover every single available deck or anything like that, but I hope this video gives you plenty of insight into the format. This format was actually extremely 
extremely, extremely fun despite all of the floodgates available at the time. And Necros are one of my favorite decks of all time, not only to play, but because of the lore behind them. Necros are just so cool. They are literally wearing the skins of dead synchro monsters. Necros of Unicor is fabled Unicor. Necros of Trishula is Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Necros of Bryanac is, you guessed it, Bryanac, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. And Colossalus is Colossalus. And playing in this format, after I sold my Necros, I switched over to Heroes, which was also really, really fun because Heroes is another one of my favorite decks. And playing Heroes at the time was not a bad meta call at all because most decks needed their graveyard, Burning Abyss and Shadal being the main examples. But anyways, guys, I really hope that I was able to explain everything adequately. And as always, be sure to dick slap that like button and subscribe. Subscribe! <laughs> <laughs>